Can't even get the ship in frame. Dang thing is so big. Okay, I got to the airport. I got my baggage tag thingy. I completely forgot how to stick it to the bag. <laughs> Gonna get completely lost again today. Today, yeah. I mean, I Forward. Um, uh, you know, by opening my window, it's gonna make it colder on your side. As long as it's going out that way. No, no, no. Because you're opening my window, the air comes in my side, so it's just gonna push the fart in farther. Heat rises. Oh, that's true. So we're going out. Okay. 8.45 in the morning, and how long have we been sitting here? We got here an hour and a half. Uh-huh. At the gate, inside the gate. Oh, maybe we'll make it on the ship one day. Oh, look. This guy's coming back. It's that same white SUV. I was hoping for Yeah. Sorry, I didn't, didn't get my hopes up. I know, because as soon as he said nine, I was like, he's giving him too much time. Is it that same douche? Yup. There we go. What I am showing you here in real time is the speed of the engine as I'm using the turning gear to rotate it. Look at the left and right sections. Each of the left and right here of the camshaft, you can unbolt each section individually from the cylinder there are 12 bolts on each side, so you have to undo 24 bolts to take out each camshaft section, which leads to like around 250 of these dang bolts you have to take out for the entire engine. It's days and days worth of work. You see the speed that I'm going here, moving that Allen wrench? There really is not a way to speed this process up. We, we had four or five guys going. All these custom cut short Allen bits to get in there. One of the guys cut an Allen and welded it into a ratchet wrench and made a stubby ratchet Allen. Oh, check this out. My coworker just signaled me with his flashlight. And now this is how we have to communicate with the loud engines running in the bay. You gotta go up. I gotta yell in his ear. He's yelling in my ear pointing at something and I gotta check it out go back up I gotta yell back in his ear again that's the only way you can hear while you're working down here <clears throat> you can see he's wearing earmuffs I have earplugs in and back to unbolting these bolts it's <clears throat> you could say it's boring work but at least you know what you're doing you're just sitting there all day just unbolting stuff going to town it's not a bad gig I got one out <laughs> I'm all excited about it what the oh man so that when they're when you very first break them loose they're that tight you got to put a cheater pipe over there and I believe that Allen wrench already got cut stubbier and you don't get very much room this is not <clears throat> This is not a fast process by any means. Pretty cool, I was able to get the camera all the way in here to show you this stuff. This is the, the kind of stuff I always wanted to record for myself to remind myself what this job was like. You don't see this kind of stuff in cars when you take the camshaft out, it's the entire camshaft for the whole engine. But in boats, every single piece is serviceable individually. Each cylinder has its own cylinder head, has its own fuel pump, has its own camshaft section, has everything is replaceable individually because you don't have a, f it's not typical you have a complete engine failure, it's typical you have a component failure. So by making everything unique or individual, it's cheaper and easier overall to service these things and keep them alive. I've worked on boat engines from the 1950s that are still going today. 
because of this build design theory, instead of having everything be throwaway like modern cars are nowadays. <laughs> I chose not to speed this footage up just to show you like what my day was like, how long this took. This is the whole process from fully tight to removing of just one bolt and how long this takes. That's the good part of getting paid by the hour, right? The guys on boats don't care how long it takes. When I started working on boats, they would hand you one wrench and say, here you go, work on the engine. There was no electric impacts, or they hardly even used air pneumatic tools. Everything is done manually. It's not about speed, it's about getting it done right the first time. All right, what tool am I switching to now? Oh yeah, my little tiny Nipex pliers. These are the best. This sped me up so much over anything else that everybody had come up with. These pliers are so small, I can just use them as a ratcheting mechanism in one hand. Watch this. Somebody's signaling me with their flashlight. It's probably time for lunch. There we go. And she's out. 24 more, 23 more bolts to go and that whole section will be removed. Okay, we're, everything's removed, so we're shifting it. There we go. We have it tied to a chain fall coming through the engine with a strap on it. God, this camera is dirty. Nothing stays clean in the engine room of a boat, let me tell you what. And then lower it down, and out she goes. Now what am I showing you? Oh, a different view of how we set up and remove these camshaft sections. Got to show you the close-up and then show you the farther back so you understand what's going on. The powered lift here, you got to manually move it left and right, side to side, and then it goes up and down with the buttons that are hanging above my head. Ari's just getting that set up. Well, I'm getting it hooked around the camshaft itself. And then we go down through the holes where one of the lifters would be with this strap. You know what I got? Oh, I got a bolt or two left holding it in. So we gotta unbolt, gotta get the last bolts out before you can actually move the dang thing. When you're looking at the top of the engine here, you see the green plugs. Those are wooden plugs that we made so that shit won't fall down into the bottom of the engine. And all those studs, those are all the studs for the cylinder heads. They're massive studs. Okay, now Ari's getting in there with his little, one of those little homemade ratchet tools. The problem is, is he's those ratchets aren't strong enough we actually broke a couple of the ratchets in half reefing on it that hard broke the entire ratchet itself right in the middle of the handle I still have that one somewhere it's getting it out there's a little long drawn out but it's fun to see in real time just how long this is not a simple process. And this is just one side of the engine. It's a V engine, so there could be a crew of guys working on the other side simultaneously just to speed this process up. I don't remember how many days we spent on the camshaft. I'd say we spent about a solid week working on this dang thing between taking it out apart and then cleaning up each camshaft section, inspecting them for pits any other wear and they uh, obviously the, the section sat around for a long time while we did the rest of the work and you don't just pull them out clean them slam them right back in <clears throat> they, go, they go in or they get taken out here in this video they don't go back in for a couple of weeks there we go lowering it down it was a 
task to find the right size rope. See how the hook is just going down in the engine? It was a task to find the correct length of rope that allows us to set the cam down on the side of the block there and still be able to function. If you get the strap too long, then the hook can't go up high enough. But if you get the strap too short, then the camshaft section will be floating in midair while the hook's bottomed out. Okay, everything is all disassembled and taken apart on this side. That cam galley is huge. Uh, everything. You always got to set it on cardboard. Label everything with a paint marker so everything goes right back together. And then you can see the rubber mats that we duct tape to the crankshaft to protect that. Here's the view of the whole engine bay. Take you a little walk around. Stuff stored in buckets and tubs everywhere. Well, yeah, this is a full walk around of my day. Leaving the engine room, what it's like. Shit all over the floor. You gotta be careful. Watch your head, because the clearance is isn't very tall on the top sometimes. Camera's obviously shaky as I'm walking. Hey, the eye always clear from all the liners are taken out. We were jumping over those. Those are the coolers for the turbochargers. Here's all the pistons and rods broken down. Oh, now we're back down the back staircase to the other side of the engine. Same story, but this one side's even tighter because you got that stupid electrical box in the middle they had to fight around. That just shows you how big. That's a size 12 shoe. Shows you how big those camshaft sections are. I love working on stuff that's this big. It's so much fun. Uh, and then getting the last section out, apparently. Ari's working on it there. Mmm. Ah, uh, wafting, wafting. Everybody loves their own brand. Oh, I just smell completely like diesel from working on the boat all day. Having a five gallon bug sprayer filled with diesel and just shooting everywhere inside the engine and then sticking my head in there and feeling the drips on my head, so. I am going to enjoy this fucking shower. <laughs>